wouldn't pay their sep wouldn't register for septic tanks, and now those people have to pay a lot more and can't qualify for grants. And they did the same with the household charge, and those people now have to pay a lot more in household charges as a result of being told by some parties not to pay them. And we're facing the same problem here in relation to the local property charge. This, this, this government was brought in to fix the national finances uh, in a manner which supports work and indeed job creation. And people are talking about uh, income taxes. Further increases in income tax will have a very negative impact on job creation. And this government has been saying that on numerous occasions. Uh, and the local property tax is six times more job friendly than taxes on labour. And that's not coming from the government, that's coming from the ESRI. Six times. And in designing the, the, gov the, the tax, the government has ensured that the tax is fair and indeed progressive with owners uh, of the most valuable property paying the most. The local property tax will be used to pay for vital public services including local enterprise and job supports, fire services, road maintenance, which is mentioned on the order of business here day by day, libraries and recreational amenities. And the tax also takes into account uh, of people's ability to pay it through the series of deferral arrangements, as has been advocated by uh, the minister here this morning. Uh, but as a measure of fairness, the vast majority of people will pay something and the revenue will ensure compliance and, and collection. Now, Fianna Fáil signed up in 2010 in their negotiations with the IMF, which they didn't tell anybody about, mind you, and they proposed the introduction of a property tax with the objective of raising 530 million by 2014. And in their latest pre-budget submission, they also left in the flat 100 euro household charge. So that's the record of Fianna Fáil where property charge is property taxes in, in being. And as regards Sinn Féin, Sinn Féin are opposing the introduction of this fair and progressive tax, but they seem to have no, um, appear to have no problem whatsoever with a property tax in Northern Ireland, where an average House pays approximately £1,000 in domestic rates annually. And there's no deferrals for those people, be they in council houses or be they in mansions in, in, in Northern Ireland. Uh, this is a fair tax on assets, which is commonplace throughout the development world. There's no question about that. And why Sinn Féin? along with other so-called socialists, would oppose this is a tribute really only to their political opportunism, I would suggest. So, the revenue uh, will be looking after this tax. Uh, the minister has outlined uh, the deferrals and the exemptions uh, for, household, for households. Uh, and I commend uh, this bill to the House. Thank, Thank you, Senator. You. Uh, Senator Sean Barrett. Uh, four minutes, Senator. Okay, Cormac, uh, I suppose, uh, continuing from uh, Senator comments that we, many ways we wish we weren't here, uh, but uh, uh, it, at this stage in the bill, uh, we have added under the agreement uh, 10 billion uh, uh, to taxation, and public expenditure is still rising and frequent. The last time that this minister was here, we were discussing that, that, that uh, uh, we have become a high tax uh, society. And this is different from saying we'll substitute the property tax for less tax uh, on income. Uh, this is increasing the overall tax burden. As several people have said, that uh, the, uh, the burden is really hurting uh, people um, uh, at the moment. And we do have to address the kind of issues that Pro Park 2 was addressing. And indeed, other issues that are raised in uh, the child benefit report where in the appendix, it shows that the Irish level of social provision was among the highest you'd find anywhere. It's very difficult to do all of those when our employer as, as, as people who, who are paid from the public purse, our employer is broken uh, and trying to remedy that situation and uh, uh, you know, extra schemes for public expenditure.
future uh, can't really be pursued uh, in the present situation. Just some of the thoughts, if I may, uh, 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 Minister. I mean, it's been described as a stable source of income. It's not. If it was, it had been applied in 2006, the records would be down by about 60 percent. So, I mean, somebody in the civil service wrote that this is a new stable source of income. Not with our Irish property prices, it isn't. I guess the state is taking a gamble that they, that they, the, the house prices will rise. Development levies, I think, should have been considered in it because they were hidden in the price of houses uh, in the boom and uh, people pay tens of thousands uh, in, in levies. So should the stamp duties. It's a bit like that, uh, you know, heads I win, tail you lose. You pay your taxes up front in stamp duties on a property and then the state says, well, we changed now. We don't do stamp duties anymore. You, see, you can pay on the annual basis. The valuation, I think, needs uh, some thought. Uh, what about if the locals know it's a high crime area, and happily, I, I think I read the other day, 4,000 people have been arrested for the spate of burglaries. But there, there were, it was a massive spate of burglaries, which would have seriously, which the locals would have known. And so, you know, part of living in this area is you'd be burgled twice a year. Now, that's now under control. But do the revenue commissioners know where high, burg high, high, burg high crime areas are? Supposing irresponsible bankers, that's Mr. Noonan, Mr. Noonan when he was in, uh, break out again and give some guy a totally daft loan to buy the house next door. What happens to everybody else who lives in that uh, uh, row of houses? Because that irresponsibility um, was there before. Uh, would it have been possible for anybody to live near the Burlington Hotel and uh, when the property industry went nuts and paid you know, hundreds of millions for, for sites and there were residential properties nearby? What happens if, if, yet again, we have irresponsible bankers on the loose in this country going on lending sprees? What happens for county council planning decisions? If they make a toxic dump beside some house or, or, or whatever, um, a, you know, do, can you include in your valuation the possibility that the county council planning office will go uh, AWOL and, and give permission for these kinds of things? Uh, I mean, it, 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 that, that, uh, it, it, that having paid uh, this tax over a number of years, if, if something in the planning department goes wrong and you're rezoned that seriously devalues the property, uh, you know, can you get a refund or what, what, how will that be handled or will you still be valued at, 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 at the highest uh, a, 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 a limit? Um, there's constant pressure in the Irish media to talk up house prices. So supposing that succeeds and a ministerial colleague uh, it, it comes up with uh, uh, new tax incentives, you know, despite all the evidence, we, we go for a property boom again. That doesn't give any extra disposable income to people who see a house purely as a place to live in. And, and that's the problem with treating a house as an asset. It damaged this country hugely. Let's just have houses as places to live in and pay for the services that the minister has described. But there'd be pressures. I think newspapers depended so much for property investments. They're all the time saying, we need a new incentive to start another property bubble. That will seriously uh, uh, damage people who won't have the extra income to pay. And, it, in fact, and all they want to do is to, uh, is, 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 is to live in the house. And income declines always for old people. Uh, you know, at the best, it could go down by half, and some pension schemes, as you know, Minister, are so small that there could be 40, 50, 60 percent declines in income. And I think some consideration could be, should be given as to, as to how uh, uh, can, uh, can they pay. So I suppose, just to conclude, and thank you for your, for your time, uh, that um, trying to design a house tax system Maybe the old poor low valuation system wasn't that bad um, after all in that it did take account of size. We've moved to a market value system uh, which has a lot of uh, uh, imperfections. Now just looking to some points uh, on, the, on the minister's uh, uh, speech. Um, the legal independence of the revenue commissioners, you mentioned that in page three, it is a body which does scare people. Are we going to have uh, a, a, you know, p pensioners who genuinely have a decline in their income being put on the list of tax defaulters. You know, a, 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 you know I think some, Thank some, you, Senator. some care. Should, should, uh, the, uh, the, the inspection of the property on page uh, uh, 19 and the honest opinion on page 16. I think, uh, I think most people will be honest, but it may not be uh, um, evaluation with the revenue agrees and we should assume that people making the submissions are honest. Thank you, Thank you, Senator, and thank you Thomas, Minister. Senator Thomas Byrne, you have four minutes, Senator. Thank you, Senator Gilroy, for his good wishes there. They're much appreciated. Um, 
but unfortunately this bill is not appreciated actually in, in large parts of, of the Mead's constituency. Uh, I, unlike the Fine Gael and Labour Party, have not unlike the Fine Gael and Labour Party, I have not changed my view on the property tax. And one was an outspoken voice during the last government that we shouldn't have a property tax uh, because uh, of its unfairness. And I'm glad that was reported in the media at the time and I can remind people uh, with my on the record so comments the uh, on the issues. So I didn't well. speak off the record on those issues. Uh, the property tax, in my view, is deeply unfair. Uh, it's unjust, it's deeply unfair, particularly in County Mead. When you go to towns like Dunboyne or at Toast, which are in the top 13% nationwide in house prices, when you look at the property price register of prices for last year, no account is taken, uh, whatever, uh, of, of, of mortgages or the commuting to work or the extra costs that these families have. That's deeply unfair. Another issue in relation to the unfairness of this tax is the level of service that people get from local authorities. Uh, when someone sees a pothole road, having maybe paid the development levies that we spoke about in a rural area, and they don't see any prospect of that road getting fixed when they pay the property tax. They're not inclined to pay it. They're not inclined to want to pay it. They certainly want to comply with the law, as Fianna Fáil does. I want to be clear about that. Uh, we want to comply with the law. But you can see the frustration that people have when they see basic items left undone because of a lack of funding. When you go into housing estates, people are now expecting maybe their grants will be cut or the residents' associations will get um, more help uh, from the local authorities. That's not likely uh, at all. This is the wrong tax at the wrong time. The IMF or nobody told you to bring this in because you have renegotiated uh, the IMF agreement on a number of occasions. And one of the greatest examples of renegotiation is the reduction in capital expenditure that you negotiated with the IMF. So you didn't want to spend the money uh, on capital spending. You actually didn't want to spend the money on roads. The Minister for Transport boasted last year that 400 million uh, was cut from the roads budget and nobody noticed. And that's a renegotiation that you did uh, with the IMF and that, that was your choice. Just as this property tax is the Fine Gael, uh, Labour uh, government's choice. No one told you to include people with very high mortgages. No one told you to include people uh, on social welfare for this property tax. And no one told you to be so blatantly uh, unfair. In relation to one specific issue which does uh, impact on quite a number of households in, in South Mead in particular is the whole issue of uh, pirate. And while I do absolutely welcome an exemption for those houses uh, with pirate achieve, I do have questions maybe that the Minister could answer because people are asking me these questions. The standard test for, uh, pirate, for pyrite in a house uh, costs um, usually in the low four figures, two to three thousand euros, as I understand it, Minister. Uh, and I'm wondering, is that the type of test that's now going to be required uh, for people to get an exemption? Because, of course, that would take the good out of the exemption. Another test is available is simply somebody to come in uh, with, a, with, a, with, with, with a spirit level and just check the, check the, the, check, check the house. Or on a basic visual inspection, uh, you can see whether houses have in fact uh, got pirate in them and are suffering from pirate damage. Another issue, Minister, is in relation to those housing estates where some houses have pirate and others don't, but all of the houses are unsaleable. And that's a big issue because I think that would be a difficulty going back to the revenue and saying, look, my value is zero. But if I want to buy a house in certain estates in South County Mead, you won't be able to get a mortgage for any house in the estate, regardless of whether there's pyrite damage in it or not. And that's a fact. And I hope that you're dealing with that, Minister, and I would like to know the answer because I don't see it uh, in the legislation. Uh, because this does tend to affect some houses and maybe not others, maybe depending on phases. But all houses uh, get tarred with the one brush. And I do welcome uh, some of the measures the government has announced in relation to damage uh, for pyrite. But I would like to see it uh, done quicker, and I've always been constructive in relation to my support uh, for the government in relation to that. But these people, certainly, there's a lot of uncertainty out there. They want an answer. They're asking me for answers, and I'm sure they'll be asking other people in the media over the next few weeks uh, for those answers. But fundamentally, this is a deeply unfair tax. It's going to hit people really, really hard. I don't think people realise uh, the amount they're going to have to pay. They certainly realise uh, the lack of services there. Uh, it's not fair. The, you know, we're often blamed for abolishing the household rates uh, in the 70s, but at the time they were very, very high and they were a huge burden on families. And I will say one thing uh, for Sinn Féin. Sinn Féin are running a no property tax campaign in Lifford, but in Straban, which is essentially the same town, they've increased the local property tax by the highest rate uh, in the north of Ireland. And I think there are questions that Sinn Féin will have to answer in relation to property tax. I personally have been always opposed to it because I see the impact that it has uh, in County Mead, particularly in the commuter belt, uh, and I think this bill should be opposed. It's not true to say that we had a full debate on this. As one of my colleagues said, I disagree, I think it was Senator Quinn, that this was the day for amendments and we had a day for the property tax. We've guillotined debates, rushed in before Christmas, and now this bill 
rushed in uh, before a by-election, which I think is very deeply unfair that people that were not getting the full time to debate these issues. It's been handed down on high while everybody is doing their work preparing for it and the legislation not even passed. Gormala. Thank you, Senator, Senator David Kellner. You have four minutes, Senator. Okay, Hurley, um, I'm quite amazed at some of the comments I've heard this morning uh, in this chamber and this afternoon. Quite extraordinary coming from a Labour Party senator when Senator Gilroy said that street politics is not appropriate for parliamentarians. In a democratic is parliamentarian the, system, uh, is, the, yeah. is the legacy of Larkin and Connolly forever to be banished from the Labour Party. Street politics is very important for anybody who wants to be part of a campaign to defeat what they see as an unjust so and unfair charge. So when I hear the Labour Party say that street year. politics should no longer be, no longer uh, be there should be no longer a role for parli street parliamentarians, yes, I, find that, I find that absolutely outrageous. You do because it's not, um, true. It's not populist enough for But you. I think the most outrageous comments that I've heard in this chamber today have actually come from Senator Thomas Byrne. And the reality uh, is, the the reality is that the by election when is on, Minister. <laughs> I, did, uh, I did not interrupt anybody. I sat here and I listened to all of the senators, but of course they like to interrupt when Sinn Féin takes to their feet because they don't know, they don't like what we have to say. So I'll start again and maybe I might be given some respect. And here, look, if I can just ask that the other, the other uh, senators in the chamber give me some respect and allow me to make the points that I am allowed to make. I have four minutes to, to make my contribution. And I say it again, I am absolutely amazed that Senator Thomas Byrne can walk into this chamber with the brass neck that he has and say that he was against the property tax. When his party signed this country up to a property tax with the Troika uh, arrangement and with the National Recovery Plan, their infamous four-year plan, he is the same senator and the same party who brought in the universal social charge, four tough, gruelling austerity budgets, which had a deep impact on many working families, threw away the sovereignty of this state, brought about massive unemployment, hundreds of thousands of young people scattered across, this, uh, 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 um, scattered across the globe, in America, in Australia and everywhere, because of their policies. We have hundreds of thousands of people who are in negative equity, and people who can't put food on the table, people who can't put heating oil in their tanks, and people who are really struggling. All of the evidence points to more people living in poverty today than was the case two years ago, four years ago and six years ago. So Senator Thomas Byrne and the Fianna Fáil party have to take full responsibility for all of that because he was a cheerleader for all of those policies and for those in government who are standing over those policies and putting those policies in place. But so too do the Labour Party and Fianna Gael senators have to take responsibility for the fact that poverty has increased levels of deprivation have increased. And when Senator Morris Cummins talked about dishonesty, I will put it back to him and I will challenge him to a public debate in Waterford on this issue at any time of his choosing. If he, wants to throw mud, if he wants to throw mud and he wants to engage in a uh, debate on the issue of the property tax, I will challenge him to a proper debate. And let's remind ourselves of what Fine Gael said in their election manifesto. What they put to the people of this country they were elected on the basis of their manifesto. If you want to talk about dishonesty, I'll read it directly. Page 59 of your own manifesto under funding local government. Fianna Fáil's proposal, now endorsed by the Labour Party, to introduce by 2014 an annual recurring residential property tax on the family home is unfair. And I agree, it is unfair. So before the election, Fianna Gael felt it was unfair, and now they seem to think it's fair. And as the leader of the uh, Shannon said it's a tax on assets. It is not a tax on assets, it's a tax on the family home. There are many assets which are not being taxed. A quote from Enda Kenny when he was the uh, opposition uh, leader and when he was asked about a property tax. In the Dáil, the transcript of the record in the Dáil, he said, it is morally unjust and unfair to tax a person's home and by so doing grind him into the ground. Indeed in cases it could probably be unconstitutional. It reminds me of a vampire tax in that it drives a stake through the heart of home ownership, through enthusiasm and initiative, and sucks the lifeblood of people who want to own their own home and better their positions. And again, I agree with the Taoiseach. It is a vampire tax that will suck the lifeblood out of communities, the lifeblood out of families who are really struggling. And I can see the minister sitting there. You don't understand. You genuinely don't understand what it is like for most families out there. 
You do not understand how difficult it is for people to make tough decisions about whether to pay the electricity bill. And we see that many more people are finding it difficult to do that. To put oil in the heating tank, to pay the gas bill, to get the groceries, to put food on the table for their children, to send their children to primary and secondary school. And you sit there and you have an empty expression on your face because you live in a bubble which are inflated salary and you have absolutely no idea whatsoever. You have no idea whatsoever what it was like for those families. And you come in here and ask us as parliamentarians and as people who are being asked to support this bill to support a grossly unfair, unjust, regressive tax Sir, that is not based on ability to pay. John I'll finish on this point yeah. uh, last by here, look. The family home does not raise revenue. The family home does not generate income. You can do that through taxes. You can do that through taxes and you have any amount of options, Minister, to raise taxes on the wealthy, to raise taxes on higher earners, and you have failed to do so. Every opportunity in the last two budgets were given to your party to raise taxes on higher earners and you failed to do so. And instead you're putting in place crippling taxes, unfair, unjust taxes, and being supported, by the way, by Fianna Fáil, who we all know are also in support of these unfair and unjust taxes. Uh, taxes and we will continue to fight this tax outside this chamber and I'll make no apology to anybody in government or Sir, Fianna Fáil Sinter for saying Moulin, that we will Sinter robustly, Moulin, you're, you're right we will time, robustly oppose this tax. Yeah. Yeah. Sir, 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 just for a start, just for my, my friend and colleague Senator Cullinan, can I put it once again, perhaps he didn't hear, but Michael McGrath made it quite clear. 18 months ago, when this was first being mooted, that Fianna Fáil were opposed to introducing a property tax at this time. Now, I know, well, now, wait a minute, let's put it straight. Don't be going around with this canard that somehow Fianna Fáil are supporting the property tax. We're not supporting no. it at this time. We made it quite clear, and the finance spokesman has made it quite clear, that we weren't going to support this particular tax. Now, I also want to put on record that Michael McGrath has also stated publicly that he believes it was wrong for the then Fianna Fáil administration to agree to the Troika request in 2010. And also, Michal Martin has gone on record as saying that at the time that the government made that commitment, that the economic situation was vastly different to what it is now. Vastly different. It is the last two years, as this government has been constantly and perpetuating the view throughout the country that things are so bad. How many times have we heard ministers saying, the country is bust, it's bankrupt? So things did change. And you know, when you talk, accuse Fianna Fáil of being in favour on one occasion and now not being in favour, this government hasn't got the monopoly in changing its mind. How many of their promises have they changed their minds on over the last two years, apart from any achievements that the Minister, I have no doubt, will be happy to illustrate to the House. So I just want to put it on record. That it is perfectly, that it is, that it is, <laughs> I just want to put it on record that it is perfectly feasible for a political party to have an evolving policy and to change its policy, change, and to change its policy due to circumstances. <laughs> it is absolutely, and believe me, you can laugh all you want on the other side, but you are doing it and you will continue to doing it. And I you could, agree, I could give it's you okay. chapter and verse on commitments that were made particularly by the Labour Party, prior really to the last election. Evolving situations. The, go on to the social media sites. Go on to the social media sites, last we heard of. <laughs> and you will, find, you will find the truth coming from the electorate itself. But I just want to put it in the context of what this bill is all about. Is that, again it has been pointed out, that something like 150,000 people who bought houses paid something like 10,000 of, of a tax uh, on, on their properties during the time of the boom. They're now being expected to pay up this property tax. But we're presented with a fait accompli here. I just want to put a question to the Minister in the context of uh, reports in today's newspapers that indicate that the Revenue Commissioners are not going to send a letter out to some 65,000 um, taxpayers who uh, register for the revenue online. Uh, and by the way, as self-employed, I'm one of those. I had been anticipating that I would be receiving a letter in the post now it looks like I'm going to have to go to my accountant, who normally deals with these issues. I don't deal with them with the, with the, with the uh, hands-on approach with the revenue. He is the representative in dealing with my particular tax thing, and I'm sure that this is quite true of an awful lot of other self-employed people. So I'm going to have to make contact with my accountant to establish how do I find out uh, what the valuation is going to be on my property. 
uh, which will be online sometime. Maybe the Minister can point out when will that happen. Will it coincide with the letters being sent out in the mail? And also, would he not consider that there might be a case to be made for informing those 65,000 people who may be waiting for a letter and who will not get it, and who may then find themselves having to be penalised in another month or two months or three months, and may argue, well, I never got the letter. It just seems to me that it might sow some confusion, and I think that maybe the Consumers Association, if I'm right, were quoted as saying that that might be the scenario. So I'm only just raising it simply because uh, I was trying to apply it to my own situation. Unless I saw that in the media, I wouldn't have known that that was the only way I was going to find out what the valuation was going to be on my property. So I, it's just one specific issue, uh, and it's an administrative one I appreciate, and I'm sure that the Minister, uh, in his usual uh, uh, efficient way, has got top of it anyway. But uh, just to be curious, I'd be anxious to get a, a question on it. And could I just finally say that the exemptions that have been uh, introduced, particularly for those who, whose houses suffer from pyrite, I think that that's an admirable deferral that has been made, but it is only a deferral, I'm right in saying, it's not an abolition. And the deferral, and I think the Senator Hayden referred to this in her contribution, is only for three years. Again, considering the economic situation that we're in, uh, maybe that there might be a need for to look at that again. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. And Tara, to respond. You well, are, you are, um, I think you are officially five minutes, but we'll try and... Well, you, you might just tell me when the five minutes... Yeah, yeah, I, I, I will fire a, a I warning you should, bell. You, you yeah. should, you should, you should uh, take take me out of my pain at that stage uh, last year. Firstly, I, I want to apologise to uh, Senator uh, Cullen, who, who said I had a, a vacant expression and look on my face. I defy anyone who has spent seven hours yesterday at an ECOFIN meeting in the Justice Lipsy building not to have a vacant look on their face the next day, uh, given, given, the, uh, given the, the discussions that occurred there from time to time. Uh, and can I also say this, that um, Senator Cullen says that uh, we live in a bubble and I think it's a very dangerous thing in politics to presume uh, that other colleagues know or don't know the circumstances that we all face. No one uh, is swinging from the rafters or swinging from the chandeliers of this fine house, uh, singing yippee that a, a local property tax is being introduced. There's no one, there's no one on this side of the house uh, who is claiming that uh, this particular tax is going to be the most popular tax. But it is inevitable in a circumstance where we are trying to repair the national uh, finances of the country, that we've got to broaden the tax base. And I think it is worth putting on the record what the ESRI have said, that it is a property tax is six times less harmful in terms of employ employment, enterprise, and trying to get the uh, domestic economy going as against direct taxes on, on income. I very much agree with Senator Barrett on this point. I think we are at the saturation point on taxation. I said it in a recent article I wrote in the Sunday Business Post. Um, we have the taxation base in 12 months collapsed from 50 billion to 35 billion. And we have got to repair that hole. And this has nothing to do with the banks and the debt and all the rest of it. This is to do with a fundamental problem that the taxation base of this country under the previous government over 15 years was based on an unsustainable property <laughs> bubble. A third of all the taxes, taxes collected were as a result of stamp duty. And uh, in 2008, uh, we fell off the financial cliff. We went from 50 billion in taking in in tax to 35 billion in a 12 month period. Our expenditure didn't change that radically because of the circumstances that people found themselves in. So we've had to, we've had to repair this particular um, uh, uh, gaping hole in the public finances. And yes, it is a widening of the tax base. Uh, it is not harmful to employment. Uh, I believe that even in good times, we should have had the courage to consider a property taxation system. Uh, Sinn Féin claimed that this is, isn't progressive. This is probably, I mean, to those people who argue this, this is a wealth tax in another name, because those people who have uh, very exten extensive houses in extensive locations who have a value on that house at some point in the future in terms of marketable value, that is a form of wealth that they have. To suggest that those people at the top of the tree won't pay more as a result of that is fundamentally uh, uh, unjust. So this is, a, this is a fair tax and we are replacing what was an unfair tax in terms of the domestic charge 
with this particular uh, tax. Um, One minute. Uh, well, we'll have to, I feel like after the break, we, we might okay. widen out the race. Can I just make the point, and Minister Noonan would make the point if he was here. We had a debate on this issue in this House before December. Minister Noonan and colleagues in the Department of Finance listened very closely to what colleagues here had to say. And in the amendments that we're bringing forward to the Principal Act today um, in this House, we have attempted to reflect some of those problem areas. I'm not saying into the future that they may be changed. Of course, there's a change in the operation of this tax, which is a fundamental change to Irish, the tax law. But I want to say this, that there is a responsibility on all citizens, if this tax is um, accepted by this House, accepted by the other House, to, to pay this tax. You know, I very much take the point that Senator Gilroy made. Uh, we all have a responsibility when the, the laws of this land are made in both houses to enforce that and to attack the revenue on this is unfair. They're simply doing a job that's been tasked of it by the houses, assuming the majority of members support this tax. So uh, this, is, this is a change in taxation policy. This is widening the taxation base and this is helping in a constructive way as against attacking employment to bring uh, tax and expenditure into a better kilter. That the evidence is there. In every other Western European country, there is some form of local property taxation, which is based upon funding local services in the area. To think that we can ignore that now, in the middle of this financial crisis, would be delusional from the part of, of some people. And the government stands over this. By no means are we uh, delight, del deliriously happy with the prospect of introducing this. But we are doing it because it's the right thing to do in the right time, to coin a phrase. The question is that the bill be now read a second time. Is that agreed? Uh, the question is uh, the, the bill now be read a second time. Those in favour say ta. Those against say neil. I think the question is carried. Vote all.
daughters of Martha Disney. Finance, local property tax, Amendment Bill 2013, second stage. The question is that the bill be now read a second time, and on that question, the division has been challenged. Tellers Taw, Senator Paul Cochran, and Senator Aideen Hayden, Neil, Senator Catherine Riley, and Senator David Coronan. Time a lot is one minute starting now. Allotted for voting. Uh, the result of the vote is Tar 29 Neil 17. The question is carried. Uh, we are now in committee and uh, section 1. Uh, we'll, we'll wait for the minister. Is the section 1 stand part of the bill? Is that agreed? Section 2. Amendment number one, the name of Senator Riley, uh, and two, uh, both of these are out of order. First, in the print of the bill, and second, not relevant to some of the bill, as read for the second time. Amendment number three is a new section, so I call on Senator Riley to move amendment number three. Um, I'd like to move um, amendment number three, please, and just um, to speak to the section. The whole. Speak to the section, then at the same time, if I can. Um, just as, as with its reference to Amendment Number One and Two, which were ruled out of order. Now, the minister in the second stage speech said, and he, he reiterated there in his closing comments about recent ESRI research, and that um, the property tax is the advantage of being six times more job friendly than those taxes on work and income. I do contest still that it is unfair and ina ina 
in egalitarian and it is only the tiniest element of tax taxation according to one's ability to pay and he did mention that it is uh, a type of wealth tax in itself but as I mentioned in my contribution in December that in terms of the definition of property as per um, the legal definition or um, that it, it the, this we're only taxing in this case the house the family home as opposed to um, the wider or the broad definitions of property that could be taxed and um, that would encompass a wealth tax and assets in that respect um, and when you're talking about saying that it's more friendly to the domestic economy rather than income and um, taxes on, on work, I just you know want to make the point then how many additional people will this tip into mortgage arrears? I know the Taoiseach and the Taunishtat in the review of the programme for government today say that um, they want most families in mortgage arrears to be offered a sustainable solution by next year, but what will this tax um, on debt do for people who are in mortgage arrears? In terms of um, Amendment 3, I believe it's grouped with Amendments 6, 10 and 17. Um, this group of Amendments 3, which are mine, um, are designed to exclude certain groups of um, properties and persons. Oh, sorry. I think it's a different amendment. Oh, yes. It seeks to exclude certain different um, groups of properties and persons from the application of the tax. Um, amendments... Sorry, is that right or am I... Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Amendments 3 and 6. six, six, six uh, just, to, just to clarify, amendments of 3, 6, 10 and 17 are related and may be discussed together by agreement. Mm -hmm. Is that agreed? agreed. agreed. Yeah. Amendments 3 and 6 seek to include the liability arising from negative equity and the chargeable value under the terms of the tax. A property tax, as I said, is meant to be a tax on an asset and people living in negative equity don't own the asset and they own a debt and there's no positive value. They cannot realise any value therein from it and you're in effect, as I said, taxing um, a debt. Um, this amendment ensures that when a property is being valued, the negative equity is, is deducted from the current market value. Now, Amendment 6 emphasises this po point again, um, uh, while Number 17 repeats the same proposition. That really does say something about the government, that they believe it is acceptable to place a tax on a debt rather than an asset. Um, I know, you're, you're, of course, family home um, tax is full of such anomalies. P people living in the private rental sector will end up paying the tax even though they, t they don't own the asset. Local authority tenants are going to end up um, facing a similar fate pay paying said tax too. And all of this does demonstrate that it it's not a property tax in the normal sense of the term. It's a tax on the privilege of living in a family home irrespective of whether you own it or rent it or whether it has any real value at all. So I will be um, pressing amendment number three. Well, uh, Senator Daly. Thank you. I, just in relation to... Amendment 17, um, and that obviously applies uh, to, to the negative equity situation that many people find themselves in. Um, and as my colleague um, was pointing out, the, um, the fact that this is a, a tax on, on, on the debt and that people are, who are in debt aren't getting any relief from this. And we, you know, we all accept that in 1977, when the, when the property tax uh, or rates were abolished, it was a, 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 um, a retrograde step in relation to local financing. Um, but uh, at this stage, uh, where we have so many people in negative equity, which large uh, mortgages out uh, and due that as I spoke earlier on second stage, that having no um, relief for them in this particular scenario and in the bringing in of a property tax uh, is neither fair nor equitable. And the Revenue Commissioners point out that uh, a tax has to be fair and equitable for it to, to be applied. And obviously in this case, that's why we're putting forward the amendment in relation to um, the uh, situation of negative equity. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. I'm Tara. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, Senator Hart. Uh, okay, here. Thank you. Uh, in relation to the amendment, uh, Sinn Féin are talking about tenants. I just quote that uh, recent statement here that if the council tenants are made to foot the bill, uh, they'll be paying uh, for a property they don't own. Um, that's from the Sinn Féin representative, uh, Owen O'Brien. Uh, but in Northern Ireland, that's the norm. It's the tenant, actually, private tenants pay. And Council tenants pay the property tax, so I don't think the argument gets done. You can't have two a party and, and have two different positions on tenants of a property. Uh, either either a tenant in Northern Ireland uh, doesn't own their house the same way as a tenant in the Republic doesn't own the house. You can't force people 
and they're in Northern Ireland to pay a tax when they're a tenant and say, well, out here, because the principle of it, irrespective of if it's one euro a year or 500 a year, the whole principle has to be adhered to. That. The, 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 their principle is all over the place, and their, their, their policy is actually. Uh, I, I, I can't find a word in any time to describe it. But I'll call it maybe a cross border tax, is called, you know, because it's different on each side. Senator Colin. Um, I just want to support the uh, amendment um, and to say that it is, it is reasonable to have different positions um, on uh, different parts of the island, considering, uh, first of all, that Sinn Féin is in a coalition government um, or an all-party government in the north, but also that the, uh, the rate system which is uh, in place in the north, as, as people will know, was a system that was there going back to direct rule. And I don't see it as a perfect system at all. At least I'm honest and I can come into this chamber and say, I don't see it as the fairest system. I don't see it as a perfect system. And I would like to see it uh, uh, um, reformed. But uh, we, as you know, um, and I said this to the Minister on several occasions, and it's a bit like Groundhog Day in this house, that we want to get fiscal powers for uh, the Assembly in the North so we can make those kinds of decisions. And without that, unfortunately, the entire assembly is constrained, including the, uh, the, the, the party which uh, the Labour Party and sometimes Fianna Gael and sometimes Fianna Fáil say they are affiliated to, which is the SDLP. It's interesting that all of the criticism we get, of course, in terms of what happens in the assembly is directed at Sinn Féin, but never at the SDLP or any of the other parties who are in the assembly. And obviously, obviously that's... That, obviously that's Obviously, that tells tells its own story. Obviously, party. that tells its own story in terms of uh, the reason, the reason why. Um, I like all the noise in the background, by the way. It's when I when I speak. It's, uh, can I just uh, the time uh, is slipping by? Yeah. Can I just remind the Labour Party um, of what they promised in their own um, manifesto again? Because this goes back to the neg negative equity issue. When they talked about the property tax, and I'll read it directly from their manifesto, page 16, and just to enter it into the record it, of the house. Frankly, can oh, correct the amendment. It's, uh, absolutely relevant. When you hear uh, um, Lasco here, like I don't you, want you, you to accept, wander too far accept. from the. I have no intentions of wandering at all. I'll be, I'm going to read directly from the manifesto, page 16, um, for people interested in numbers of hist historical documents. Uh, Labour accepts that it will be necessary to introduce a site value charge in order to prevent higher taxes on work. The government has not, however, carried out sufficient work to allow such a charge to be introduced in the short term. Further detailed study would be required to devise a fair basis for such a charge that takes account of the value of the property in different regions, the need to exempt some categories of homeowners, homeowners and the need to take account of those who have recently paid large sums in stamp duty or who are in negative equity. Directly from the manifesto on which the Labour Party stood, and we already put on the record of the House, the, the position of the Fine Gael party who were opposed to an annual recurring charge. So I'm just making the point that that was the position of both parties where everybody before the election, including the Fianna Fáil party, recognised that we have a huge section of the population who are in negative equity, who bought at the wrong uh, time through no fault of their own. They were victims of the bad policies, the property boom and all of that, and they now end up with a situation where their house might be valued more um, um, or worth uh, less than what they actually paid for. And I think it is a reasonable request that we um, have tabled uh, in, in, in this context in relation to dealing with the chargeable value. So I would uh, again ask the Minister to rethink on this one. I know it's very difficult for him to do it when he's rushing through this piece of legislation, and that's one of the reasons why we would have wanted more time to have you know, uh, more opportunities to constructively and put forward suggestions, even in opposing the charge. It's again reasonable for people, if they oppose something, even to try and take the rough edges of something, if we can, to make it a bit easier for those families who are in negative equity, which is what we're trying to do with this um, amendment. Senator Norris. In my opinion, both the legislation and this amendment uh, are unfair because they both have the effect of punishing the prudent. I mean, if you're somebody who's paid off your mortgage uh, with great difficulty over a number of years, uh, then uh, you're still going to be paying for it, and I think that's a pity. I also uh, wonder, um, I have an amendment down myself, which is in this section, uh, but it deals with historic houses. Uh, we obviously won't get to it because this bill is being guillotined, but I wonder if the Minister would be able to stress things a little bit and give me an answer. Um, it hasn't been ruled out, as far as I know, it hasn't been grouped, but it's just a residential property, and off the purpose of the Act be regarded as a residential property, 
where the property is a building listed for protection as being a historic architectural or cultural in, in a special conservation area, that's in direct uh, line with the government's uh, objectives uh, and is quite limited by two factors there and also would help, I think, to give the government scope to protect the great historic houses that have been acknowledged in a debate here in this house by a government minister within the last couple of weeks are a very important element in our drive towards cultural tourism. I'm thinking of houses like uh, Burr Castle, uh, like Westport House, like Kilruddery, uh, like the uh, late night of Glynn's house in Glynn Castle. These will all end up uh, derelict if, if we don't do something to protect them. And the days of punishing the alleged Anglo-Irish, although a lot of these people like the, the um, uh, O'Connors in, in Clonellis are the remnants of the ancient Irish nobility. So I really think that we should think long term rather than destroying our cultural heritage by the operation of this bill. Gilroy. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Claire, look, just with relation to, um, to speak to the amendment and the coherency of it, in fact, is what I'd like to concentrate on. There's no co coherency at all in it. Um, the Sinn Féin spokespeople here today have seemingly decided not to discuss property tax at all. They've concentrated their entire efforts on, um, on criticising the government. And that points to the populism of the party in the first instance and the uh, uh, generality of the, the bill and their popularity in, in, in this instance. I wonder, we hear it said all the time that um, that the property tax in the north of, our, of the country uh, covers medical and educational and, and a vast range of other, um, other uh, services and it's valued at about £1,200 <laughs> sterling a year. Um, I wonder would Sinn Féin, they seem to support it in the north because they've done nothing to repeal it and they've been in government there for I don't know how long, um, but they've done nothing to repeal it so... You're, you're, you're inclined to make a political po point about another uh, another jurisdiction, and I'd advise you so far as you can, because our time is very limited to, to stick to the amendment and make and your criticism I, more relevant. I, I appreciate how, how uh, important an issue it is, uh, Chairman, and I certainly would ask you to indulge me a moment, because I would have no uh, intention whatsoever about trying to waste time here in the Chamber. But I just wonder, would Sinn Féin include a uh, commitment that in their next election campaign, that they will roll out the model that they seem so fond of in the north, in the south, and campaign. I think their particular that comment is ultra vires, this particular. Ultra vires. Um, uh, look, I'll leave it at that, Chairman. Um, and, uh, okay. Thank you. Well, on Tara, I'm trying to be fair to all sides in the time left. But, uh, um, Chair, look, th thank you very much indeed. Um, th this, this, um, this, these amendments deal with the issue of negative equity um, and uh, proposals by Senators Riley and O'Brien. Uh, to exempt properties, uh, those who have neg negative equity. Um, well obviously, we looked at this issue, uh, but we were guided by uh, the recommendations of the Thornhill report, um, which was the initial report which the government asked uh, before coming to a full decision on this. Um, and the Thornhill report uh, made it very clear that a better way to go is by way of deferral systems. Uh, it is worth putting on the record of the House, Cairlock, that for people with income of less than €15,000, this doesn't apply. Uh, for, for couples with incomes of €25,000, this doesn't apply. In a circumstance where someone is in negative equity, there are very strong um, sections within the bill which allows those people to defer this uh, charge and tax until such a time as they're up on their feet again. So we've gone with the route of, of deferral as a means of helping people in negative equity. Uh, can I also say, while well, I'm on my feet here, look, and this is worth pointing out, uh, one of the promises that we gave at the time of the last election, I, I remember well, our, our own party gave it, and supported by the Labour Party, was that for people who bought uh, between an 04 and 08, that we would give an increase in mortgage interest relief to recognise the fact that that group of people, that cohort in the population, were very badly affected by negative equity. Now, we delivered that in our first budget. Uh, I'm not suggesting that has made a, a huge difference 